Okay. And Dan and Bill, please. Yes, yeah, thanks, Stephen. Very interesting. It goes to show that we can keep potting at the, go at the government. We've got to be able to get some cent into the uh, carbon um, sequestration because it shows that your figures show that we are very much uh, uh, people have more carbon soil than what we're emitting. And my question is, we had a soil information day at home the other day and I helped put the probe down, down to 1.2. We couldn't go out. house. Very, very hard setting country where we did it. And yet we were still picking roots up from grassland down that 1.2 metres. My question is, um, you were only talking a few centimetres of it when you were talking about the amount of uh, carbon in the soil. How much more effect would you be if you went down that 1.2 for getting all the yep. root system out there? Okay, thanks Bill. I talked about two levels there. I was talking about the top 10 centimetres where most of the change happens with management. Once you go um, down at the 20 to 30 centimetre soil carbon level, um, we did some analysis out of Strathdara, so not too far from here, and that soil carbon was actually, on average, so there will be some young roots in it, but on average that soil carbon was 300 years old. So it's not actually been impacted by um, within decade or even decadal management. It's got to be management over 30 years to actually, it'll be even longer period to actually get down to those deeper layers. So even though there are roots down there and they are young, um, on average the soil carbon in that soil is very old. I can provide you a reference though if you like. Mike? Yes, um, now this goes back to some of Ed's presentation. Um, the only bright spot I can see in all of this, even if we can manage to get that difference down to as low as possible, me being a, an optimist and all, could I, going back to Ed's presentation, uh, even at the 1,840 odd tonne or 13 tonne, whatever it is, could I expect a credit in eight years time when the methane that has gone into the atmosphere is returned <laughs> and so really is all this hypothetical nonsense um there's definitely i've tried to present as i said at the start what's actually happening to the atmosphere the policy rules and how it's added up you know kyoto's already got one set of rules and there's other international rules um, it does depend on what that real system ends up being but what that shows is that, um, and if you go to a country where in a lot of cases it has been over cleared, or they've got options to letting regrowth come back on some of the hard or roadable country, it doesn't actually take much locking up a regrowth and you actually eliminate that methane emissions uh, quite quickly if you look at that growth of regrowth. So um, even though that gives you some idea of the magnitude, is it? But you don't have to change trees in that very much and actually has quite a big impact. So depends whether you can actually include native trees at the moment. Um, you have to actually plant a tree out of a pot into the ground to actually get it classed as forestry. Um, regrowth's not even included. And I know Ag Force is pushing very hard to ensure that regrowth is included because that would be the most efficient and biodiversity um, friendly way of actually getting trees back in the landscape. But what about the cycling from the atmosphere back? Can you just say it again, please? Uh, what about the cycling from the atmosphere? Like, like, haven't we more or less decided that it does come back anyway? Like, hasn't this been, like, some of the oldest, most fertile lands in the world have been grazed for thousands of years by ruminants and very high in carbon, everything, uh, like, whether it be eight years, 80 years, 12 months, does it really make a difference in the end? It's like, isn't it, don't we just have to build a sustainable industry and isn't uh, isn't all the rest almost yeah it's just I don't know like could you give me any answer in regards to when it does come back from the atmosphere like what does happen like maybe like eight years is only a blink isn't it um, I can give you a technical answer on the methane part of it so the cattle are emitting the amount of methane and there's a and soil's actually capturing a small amount of methane per year. So the amount that's actually being emitted per hectare is still larger than what's been captured um, per year. So there's still going to be a build-up of methane in, that atmosphere, in the atmosphere. The other, um, so one thing we really don't know is how much of actual cattle methane is actually getting absorbed. Um, there's really no research being done on that or what that actual capture is and if it can be stimulated by some additive. There's a lot of questions and opportunities in the future but um, this is basically the best knowledge at the moment and 
the simple answer is that people that really don't know. Thanks. Anyone else before we go to our panel discussion? Uh, something specific for Stephen? Kelsey? Uh, just, to, I guess, to carry on from what Mike said, um, it's terrifying to sit here and listen to all the we don't knows that these um, financial impediments on our industry are going to be based on. And not coming from a um, scientific background, it's just, uh, I think, essentially wrong the way it's all flowing. However, it is flowing that way. But the point I just wanted to make that was you mentioned that in the 2007 and 2008, I think it was on one of the slides, when you looked for fires through fire scar, you couldn't find many. That's because there was no grass. Yeah. Exactly, and that's why I put out in the analysis, it's an average over time. So um, in some years there will be big fires and widespread fires, in other years there's not going to be um, many at all. Okay. So, well, actually to add on to that, there's a risk for the industry that some years it might be um, have massive emissions because there's big widespread fires, just like big bushfires in Victoria. Victoria's total emissions went up massively, but then there's no fire for a lot of those systems. Big stand replacing fires for another 60 years, so it's big lumps, but I've tried to average it out over a per year basis. Okay. 